Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me in low carbon orbit with uh, something I've been working on for a little while. This is a carrier I've been building. Now this is fully stock. Uh, fairly recently I did do a video on a sort of carrier type thing, which used BD armory and stuff, but was made with stock parts, but this is fully stock. Any armor, any weapons on this would be fully stock. Um, as you can see, it does have a large hanger. It's rather massive, and there are weapons in here. They're all stock. I will get to them in a minute. But yeah, you can see uh, that this is mainly comprised wing surfaces, which does make it a bitch to launch. I'll probably put the launch video at the end of the um, at the end of the at the uh, at the end of the video. Uh, it is all stock. There was no no mods to get into orbit. Nothing like that. No hyper edit. I'm just awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm not awesome, but, um, you know, I don't, I didn't use any mods, because I do so many modded things now, I've just fallen back in love with doing this sort of thing, which I used to do quite a lot. But yeah, this is probably the most functional carrier I've ever built, because it has a really massive hanger, it is giant, I mean, this is like a Mark 1 pod right there, and these are all, like, crew cans, and you can see it is rather large, and all nicely illuminated, and there are a few little missiles dwarfed by the massiveness of this carrier. Um, it is controlled up here by a bri uh, the bridge. Um, this is, well, it's obviously a bridge. It's a two-people, a uh, two-man thing. You can see down the uh, spine of the vessel. And you can see the spine is all metal, because you want a strong spine on your spacecraft. I mean, you don't want it to break its spine. Um, and uh, you can see back here it's powered by six nuclear engines. All its fuel is here, and it also has a large amount of RCS through fuel. I'd actually quite like to put a little more fuel on this, just because uh, it, um, well, it, it's not fully, like, capable of going to distant planets. But yeah, and there's also fuel here, which is just all part of the, uh, you know, control system. And, uh, um, well, not control system, the fuel feed system. Um, and you can see it's got a lot of reaction wheels, which means it can turn quite easily, and a lot of RCS thrusters for translation and things. Um, this is obviously a pretty big ship and pretty lumbering, so it's not very good in combat. It's, uh, it, it can turn fast and things, but it doesn't have any weapons of its own, so it carries fighters, and that's what this hangar is all about. It's about moving things in formation, and uh, in that kind of, you know, that, that kind of, um, what, what am I looking for? Um, well, on that subject, I guess, its name is Hermes, as you can see here, uh, Hermes Carrier, and it's a Carrier Mark 1, because it's kind of the first sort of thing I've been working on. I've been working on a few variants, but yeah, um, its name is Hermes, because Hermes, I believe, is the Greek god of, um, kind of pushing boundaries and, you know, travel, not really travel, but, you know, traversing distance sort of thing. I'm putting it terribly, but, you know, Google it, it's roughly what I'm saying. So that's what this'll do. It'll carry a lot of, um, kerbals and things, and in ships for long distances, and that's what my, I guess, organization that built this ship plans to do. And the organization is the Goliath organization, um, which that's what it's named, and that's because there's those flags on the back. I thought that was quite nice. Goliath, because it's a Goliath task to take the amount of kerbals and do the amount of exploration this uh, company wants to do. Yes, lots of storytelling in this sort of thing. And some of you may be thinking, hmm, it's Saturday, shouldn't there be like an interstellar video? Um, and yeah, there should be an interstellar video, but the mod is just broken. Um, I have got plans to do some stuff with that. Uh, if you if you don't watch my channel regularly, you're like, what is he talking about? This is just a bit of a PSA to my, you know, subs and stuff. Um, that'll be coming back in a slightly different form, but a much cooler, way better form. Um, but yeah, I, so that's why I'm kind of doing this, because it's a little bit of a, a present for me fucking up. Um, well, the mod fucking up. They're just lots of fuck up -ery. Um so yeah, um, and you can see it's covered in docking ports. It says these outer docking ports for like service vehicles. And on the inside there's a whole bunch of these uh, little tiny docking ports for small, you know, fighters, because that's kind of what it's made for, and stacking little missiles on it, because missiles are useful. Um, and then some larger docking ports, uh, so that, um, well, so that if I need to dock bigger ships I can. It's all illuminated and things. But anyway, let's take a look at this fighter, because it's got some interesting things on it. We'll get a Nedbus out, we'll just transfer him, because it would be nice to, you know, fly through the hangar, but uh, the hatch might be a bit obstructed because of the curvature of this. But anyway, let's uh, decouple this. Uh, no, not controlled from there. And, hmm, it's not allowing me to... Oh, that's because uh, that's not the right docking port. That was the missile's docking port. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's uh, so. Ooh, that's not. That's nothing. Uh, uh, and then we'll uh, just back out a little bit. Um, uh, and, okay, let's fly out of the hangar. And you can see. Oh fuck! No, oh, it's docking with the other thing. Back up! Back up! Back up! No! Oh, you will never take me alive, docking port. Oh god! Oh, foo! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, just get out of here! Oh Jesus! 
Um, what is going on? They are the- oh my god. Uh, not a great point. <laughs> the docking port tried to pull the missile back in. Um, so it flung me all over the place. And this is already low on RCS fuel. Oh, oh fucking hell, I'm gonna cry. Oh no, wrong button. Uh, holy hell, we got out of there without actually hitting anything. That's why it's nice to have a big hangar, because I'm a terrible pilot. Uh, I'm actually usually a little better, I promise, but... Yeah, that wasn't great. But yeah, this is the sort of fighter I envision being in there, like these light sort of things. And this is ion powered and it has a lot of solar panels, you know, to power that. And it uses them kind of like this because obviously this is one ion engine so it doesn't need lots of, um, well, it would only need one big solar panel and that would offset the mass. Um, and this is, I guess, obviously some of you will be drawing conclusions already being like, oh, this is kind of like Macy Dean stuff or the more, the less rational of you will be like, you crazy bastard, you stole from Macy Dean. Um, but yeah, I, I well. Either equally true. Um, but yeah, so this is my kind of rendition of an ion fighter. But it's, it, you know, it's I've made up my own, I think. And I only have to use one of these now because, um, well, they provide two kilonewtons of thrust these days as opposed to the half kilonewton they used to provide, which was painful. But yeah, it is uh, quite a functional uh, little fighter. These missiles, annoyingly, I wanted, I, I envisioned them being fired one at a time using staging because obviously I'd like to, I could just use action groups and everything would be fine. But, um, I want to reload the missiles so action groups don't, you know, remain like that. But yeah, um, I, I envisioned, envisioned them firing once at a, one at a time. However, if you stage a liquid fuel engine and a decoupler, the liquid fuel engine just doesn't fire. Which kind of sucks, so they have to be fired as salvos, but that's that's fine. Or I could put them on the nose, I guess, if I wanted to fire them one at a time if I was hell-bent on it. Um, but yeah, these sort of uh, fighters are quite uh, nice for... You know, defending these ships, and I mean, these ships don't have to be used for you know carrying military things. I mean, they've got large hangars they could use. They could carry just lots of freight, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is uh, good for defending the ship. It's not really fully armed. I mean, I don't think Nedbus is even a pilot. Um, he's just a courier, which would make it kind of um, well. It means I can't really uh, use the the docking uh, the the um what is this the uh, flight computer, which is nice to for targeting things. You can select uh, this bit which uh, points you at your target which is very good for aiming but you know it's not to be I guess but yeah I mean I think this is all just a bit of a nice well not a fleet right now but sort of a setup to protect uh, protect things from uh, I guess <clears throat> cough uh, from nefarious things but I mean you know let's and this you can see how maneuverable this is especially with RCS um, oh geez oh oh god I'm supposed to be controlling this from yeah I'm controlling it from the top aren't I I like to control it from a probe I have back here because that's forward for the whole spacecraft as opposed to forward for this would be upwards which does make it very hard to control so that's why I have the probe there. Wait, I hope I didn't bash the fighter in the process um, but yeah you can see it turns reasonably well I mean not fantastically but uh, you know it does the job and I mean yeah, it's actually pretty neural I mean you can look at this I mean it's actually it's actually pretty good but anyway yeah and um, you know, it's got a pretty good, uh, like slight, a slight cover of the, uh, um, of the, of the, of the, of the uh, like uh, the hangar, so that you know these bits will hopefully stop any like edge missiles. I guess, although any fighter worth his salt, I guess, could get a missile on here and ruin some things. But I reckon uh, maybe I'd do something again, like to bring Macy Dean, you know, uh, Macy Dean style cowl, which would protect it quite well. But uh, yeah, protect it well from nefarious things. But hopefully for a while we won't uh, won't have to be fighting. Um, any nefarious, uh, any nefarious evil things. Hopefully that won't, you know, show up for, for a while until we've got a fleet together. Yeah, but I mean, hopefully no one will ever just try and destroy the carrier, because that'll be- OH MY GOD, WHAT WAS THAT?! Some kind of heavy missile strike ripped out something. Jesus! That tore, like, right through the ship! T tore out some serious internals. I mean, I- I was not expecting that, um... Yeah, you can see it's a bit of a torpedo there, and then in here we've just got... Well, we lost the whole crew module, and the engines look damaged. I mean, maybe... Oh, the engines actually look kind of okay, but still, I mean... The whole the internal stabilization system and the whole... Most of the power generation was knocked out. I mean... Jesus. we But we do... We have a fighter still around here. Let's try and search for this thing and, you know, get after it. We've got to, you know, try and do something. Um... Oh, there it is in the distance. Rebby, a uh, Rebby? I meant to say Rebel Heavy Fighter is what it looks like to be named. Must be some kind of prototype ship, hence, or it would have some kind of you know, name like Hermes, I guess. Some kind of, you know, colloquial name as opposed to just an official title. But let's get after this.
uh, you know, it's time to drop our linen, stop our grinning and all that stuff, and, you know, pick up some pace. But seriously, that did some serious damage. I think it was four missiles, it looked like. I mean, I, well, I yeah, was not expecting that when I started recording. I mean, jeez. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're coming up to it now. We'll hopefully get a better look of it. Because that is something really serious. I mean, I wasn't aware Goliath Industries had any enemies, but apparently, uh, apparently space is fraught with, well, what appears to be rebels. Rebel heavy fighter as well. We're in a light fighter, I guess this would be. So we're probably outgunned, but hopefully it delivered its whole payload to <clears throat> its whole payload to that carrier. I'm going to get up relatively close because, um, well, these missiles aren't particularly accurate. Don't tell them that. Uh, <laughs> and I okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to shut down my engine. I, annoyingly, I don't think this guy has like the ability to like autopilot some uh, anything. So. Uh, Aiming will be a little more difficult. Um, have I shut down that engine? Did I just do that? Yeah, shut down engine because I'm going to need to use engine controls to control the, you know, engines on the missiles. Uh, okay, let's seriously get some... There we go. That looks good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, maybe a little bit... I really want to get this accurate. I think it is out of ammo, though, from what I can see. So, um, we do have a little time to aim, which is nice. It's always good to get these shots on target. But, I mean, uh, again, I'm not sure how effective these torpedoes are. Hopefully effective enough to destroy this. Alright. Open fire. How's that looking? Oh, not good. Not good at all. We totally missed. Well. I guess we're just going to have to run away. I mean, okay, these missiles are going crazy. And I think I'm out of range. But, yeah, I mean, I imagine that'll be getting back to the... Uh, We'll get the, uh, oh, jeez, um, I can't actually, oh, there we go, Hermes carrier ship, that's, uh, that'll be ours, I assume, um, so yeah, let's hopefully get this back to the carrier, and then, I don't know, think of some kind of plan, okay, apparently this is a ship, probably because the probe is attached to it, nope, just cause, well, yeah, we'll get that car, that fighter back off camera, but yeah, this is, well, I don't know if this is even operational anymore. I mean, it's probably a little messed up. I mean, it didn't knock out the engine block, so that's good. And everyone's alive, because there was no one left in those crew cans, but... That was some serious damage. We're going to need something, well, a little more damaging. But anyway, it's uh, time to move into kind of a post-commentary thing. For the end of the video, I'm just uh, going to show you how this was launched. Um, because I did get it into space legitimately, and I thought this would be nice. Just attack on to the end, just to kind of... <laughs> push the uh, amount of times I say stock in this video. I uh, just watched the live thing back and I said stock a lot at the start of this video. But no, I do hope you've enjoyed it. I mean, it's been, uh, it was really fun to make and blowing things up is always great and this stuff's always pretty fun. But yeah, this launch vehicle required a lot of engineering. Actually, it took me about the whole length of Interstellar to make this. Um, the boosters are obviously there just for a little more thrust, but you can see this is covered in wings and I didn't use canards because canards don't have enough goddamn fuel. Uh, not fuel, um, control. So I've got full-on wings as my canards, as you can see on the edge of these rockets. Because, um, well, because this, uh, the, the spine of this rocket, the spine of the ship isn't a uh, lifting, like, body, but the, uh, underbelly is, so it's unstable. And the center of lift's really high up. And the way I countered that was by, you will see I keep un, um, locking these fuel tanks so I can use more fuel from them. That's so it burns fuel from the bottom up, so it keeps the mass as central as possible so that it doesn't flip out in the atmosphere because that would be bad to lose one of these ships although this is in fact the ship we just lost well I don't know if we lost it but I mean it doesn't look good um, so I'm thinking of putting another one up anyway um, for you know future things and future episodes and hopefully give it some better fighters and stuff like that because uh, it's all very important to the cause of um, protecting Kerbals and all that but yeah um, I think the rocket makes it all the way to orbit, if I remember rightly. Um, I, I actually don't recall. Okay, no, it didn't. Um, it needs to use the nuclear engines to just push it a little bit into orbit. The uh, launch vehicle did do most of it, but this has so much fuel on board that um, the nuclear engines can finish off the burner. And it's just so heavy that uh, it's... Um, well, it's not as heavy as it looks, because most of those are wing surfaces. But anyway, this is the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,